Hello everyone, and welcome back to Nihon Gaku. More importantly, welcome to the Sino-Japanese War of 1894. How I wish I could be saying that and actually declare war on China. I just don't think it's a good idea. We're seven technologies behind them. We're 51, they're 58. They have the largest military in the world, which is twice as large as ours. It may be all the way over here fighting Darius. In best case scenario, but even then, I predict that we would get utterly destroyed. I just don't think we could do it as much as I would love to. But in real life, real world history in 1894, the Japanese declared war on the crumbling Chinese Empire of, Ch of the Qing. And this guy was going to Hanoi. And did incredibly well. They basically suffered no... They, they suffered no losses in terms of battles. I mean, of course they had casualties, but they succeeded at every corner. They um, The war was mainly over for, uh, Korea, which was at this point a vassal state of the Qing, uh, China, and the Japanese really wanted control over it. And the Japanese in the Meiji period had successfully modernized. Um, they had modernized their, their military, the health and strength and weaponry of their military refuse um they had increased the size of their navy by an incredible amount um mainly actually by buying ships from western powers like america and britain which the chinese had kind of attempted to do but for the most part they really didn't um they didn't succeed they didn't have any money China was having all sorts of problems at this point. They were only to let the Qing were only to last another fifteen years, and we got Broadway. Excellent, only a couple, couple decades too early. Actually, I don't know when Broadway was actually created. Uh, what's this worker doing? He should be going over here because we still don't have a. We have one tile here that actually two tiles that. Oh no, this one's not in range of anything. Cargo ship. Love some money. Absolutely love some money. And Modest Musor Musorgski. Never heard of him before. Or her. Or them. I don't know who that is. And oh, here's our guy in uh who's like halfway through America at this point. Fighting wild American horsemen. Still uh, untamed. And yeah, the uh, the Qing were summarily defeated. This was this was a huge event in Japanese history and Chinese history and East Asian history generally, because as we've kind of seen, the Chinese had long been the like the influential power in in Asia and East Asia. Um, I mean, the Japanese had been kind of they'd been like the role model of the Japanese in terms of like Confucianism, and they were that was. China was where Japan got Buddhism, and China was where Japan got, like, basically most things that were Japanese uh, came from China. And this is, like, the first time in basically forever that, really the first time that Japan usurped China and basically took on the role of most modern and most powerful force in East Asia. This is also... Uh, if we look back on the past, like, the first, like, real war that Japan has really ever been in against outside forces. I mean, there was the Mongol invasion in the 12th, was what, I don't, I don't actually remember what century that was in. Either the 13th, 14th, or 15th. Um, and then there was the brief attempt of, uh, I think it was Hideyoshi to take Korea, but he was just kind of like laughed at by the Chinese in the, around the year 1600. Um, but this was a real, a real live land and sea war. Major battles were fought. Um, serious, like both were serious contenders. I mean, the Chinese thought they were going to win because China is huge, and they have. Um, many fold the uh, amount of 
manpower and whatnot compared to Japan, but they just couldn't do it. It was not in their it was not in their destiny. We're gonna have to do a research lab. Please. And Nara make another probably another lumber mill there. So that with the war the Sino Japanese war ended in we're gonna convert Hanoi. I try to at least. Uh, the Sino-Japanese War lasted a year, um, 1894 to uh, 1895. And this was not, I mean, this is not necessarily a piece of Japanese history, but I think as I, I might have mentioned this earlier, but that the Sino, the loss, their loss in the war, uh, China's loss in the Sino-Japanese War, this was kind of like the basically like the last the last big straw that broke the proverbial camel's back of the Qing. Um, this just kind of set off a decade and three quarters or whatever, until 1911 of like political chaos. I mean, the Boxer Rebellion in China was in 1900, which was a huge thing, which I won't go into. Open borders, uh, that's fine. <clears throat> research agreement that is also fine and yeah the Qing were basically screwed and it was largely uh, a result of this war but they had also been on a steady decline for one could even argue they the past century but anyway enough about China let's get these ruins crudely drawn map of the area excellent truffles Elephants? Elephants? In America? That's not right. Did that get Hanoi? Didn't look like it did. Damn, we're so close. God damn it. Well, maybe next time. Uh, lumber mill, yes. So we could also make a trading post, but I think lumber mills would be better. And yeah, that, that so that basically proved that Japan, that the war with uh, the Chinese proved that Japan was a power. Um, and it that and further Japanese progress proved to the world, um, or proved at least I should say, Greek coup in Cape Town. God damn it, Greece. Um, proved to the uh, British that Japanese, the Japanese had a uh, had enough to offer for uh, to make an alliance with them worthwhile. And in 1902, um, Britain, after some uh, negotiating as to the terms, the British and the Japanese signed a signed the Anglo excuse me uh, the Anglo uh, Japanese Treaty of 1902, which I am actually writing my BA thesis about a little bit about. <clears throat> Because that was, that was what many people regard as bringing uh, Britain out of their own period of quote unquote splendid isolation. Uh, Tokyo, let's see. Let's make a military academy or a boat. We should probably make a boat. Forget. So that yeah, uh, we're at nineteen. Oh, so it's progressing by one year now. But yeah, that was nineteen oh two. Um, they, it was it was mainly to uh, because at this point Russia had started. Um, really like moving into through Siberia they were becoming Russia was becoming incredibly interested in taking over this whole area even going into Manchuria up here Greece you're not going to do anything to me and Japan was terrified of Russia and the English were Japan was terrified of Russia over in the east the English were afraid of Russia over in the west because they were allies with France this period is very complicated but Russia was allies with France and Russia also had a lot of stake in the Ottoman Empire, and Britain also had a lot of stake in the Ottoman Empire. Well, Britain had a lot of stake in the Ottoman Empire, and the Russians were like right next to the Ottoman Empire, and they were always interacting, and various other complicated political networks that we don't need to go terribly far into. But the point is that Russia was a big threat to Japan, and the Japanese secured an alliance with Britain in 1902. Um, the alliance was 
if I remember the terms correctly, I think it's that if Japan entered a war against two or more great powers, then Britain would be called in, which will explain uh, the occurrence in... Um, I actually forgot to... This is tragic. I forgot to take my notes on a very important piece of uh, Japanese history, which is coming up soon. I forget if it's 1903 or 1904. 1904. Yes. Perfect. Okay. So the Meiji, uh, the Meiji Empire still... Meiji period is still happening right now. It lasts for another eight, uh, eight years to... Or actually ten years till uh, 1912 when the Meiji Emperor dies. But we're not quite there yet. Osaka has grown. Excellent. No longer friends with Vancouver. Not so excellent. Oh, we can coup places. That's interesting. Um, Cape Town's a low chance. Hanoi is a higher chance, but this guy's also a level 3, and I really don't want to give him the 25% chance of dying, so we're not going to do that. Um, however, I can pay some people. Hanoi, we should really just pay. Well, let's see. <sighs> Kuala Lumpur. Persia's not that far ahead. Uh, which means we could... I'm going to pay there for now. We'll try to buy them off completely later. Research agreement. We have all our research agreements, but I like I never pay attention to if they actually when they actually come to fruition. As much it much it, bleh, it must alert me somewhere. Also, Shaka City has just been okay over here. I was wondering, like, did the Chinese go all the way over to Africa or something? Although it is, I guess, equally ridiculous that the Zulu came all the way over here. Eighteen gold per turn to you, Gandhi. Are you serious? I guess, since I need you in the alliance against China. It's incredibly annoying. Ah, <sighs> Gandhi. Gandhi, Gandhi, Gandhi. That is tragic. Dynamite. And 1904. In uh, 1904, after a period of very, very... Uh, heady tension between uh, the Empire of Japan, which it was called at this point, and the Empire of Russia. Uh, the Japanese declared war on Russia, and this was the Russo-Japanese War. This is the first time that Japan had ever been at war against a Western power, um, which Russia technically was, even though they also had a lot in the East. Uh, let's work out what's going on here. Give this guy one of each, and put him back here because there's nowhere else for him to go. Unless there's something else we can build in Tokyo, probably just going to build another frigate, but we don't have any iron, so ironclad. And research. What next? What next indeed? Oh, we're, we haven't caught up on this side either. Uh, let's do that then. Let's at least get the biology. You don't need orders. Frigate. Um, this guy's finished. I don't remember what this guy was doing, but I don't particularly care. So we're probably just going to live him down by Satsuma because there are no Satsuma because there are no boats down there. I feel like I should probably build that up a little bit. Oh, we just explored that barbarian encampments. Of course, we're getting all the most useless things. We're just going to send this guy over to those ruins. Ruins are not particularly important right now, but it doesn't really matter. Um... Excuse me? In relation to the Cape Town, but you will anger the Zulus temporarily and risk escalation. You know, I don't care if I go to war with the Zulus. They can declare war on me all they want. Um, this lasted from 1904 to 1905, I think. Either 1905 or 1906, but I'm th I think it was 1905. And once again, the Japanese won. Japanese summarily defeated the Russians, as they had done to their crumbling Chinese allies. This, uh... It was kind of surprising. It was surprising to China that China lost the Sino-Japanese War. Um, the other powers were not quite so surprised. It was very surprising 
to all parties when the Japanese uh, destroyed the Russians um, who had been fiending for territory in Manchuria and even Korea. And this was a, this was a big event. Um, once again, just like they had done to uh, the Chinese, the Japanese uh, crushed their crushed their foe and sent the foe their foe's uh, government kind of spiraling downward. I mean, Russia may not might not have at least immediately been so screwed since they partook in World War II. Um, you know, whatever nine years later, but they uh, the government. I think uh, I don't remember exactly. I think it's 1919. The government, or 18, or 17, or something. Whatever. The Russian Revolution happened in the late teens, and their government completely collapsed. Just a couple, a few years after the Qing. And one can probably uh, debate on the level of a level of like direct causality that Japan had on that. Also, I love how we have negative three horses. Oh, because we have all the lancers. I didn't even think about that. Kyoto, I'm going to make a temple. Um, I guess that's it. Yep, Japanese beat Russia. This was, uh, this, this was the proof that the whole world, this, this basically proved to the whole world that Japan was, Japan was now a, Japan was now a power. I mean, they were, they were like a fully westernized fully modernized, fully industrialized threat. Just like Britain and France and Germany and everyone else. Um, not that not that they were like a threat in the same way like Russia was a threat in the sense that they were um, incredibly aggressive, but they were they were very powerful. Um, otherwise, not terribly much going on. I mean that the Russo Japanese war is huge. After that, not too much happens until World War Two. Or sorry, not not too much happens until World War One. We're not quite at World War Two yet. But we are finished with Nara. Um, we how much is that tile? Eighty. That's basically one turn, and yeah, we don't really want to necessarily waste time building a monument here. So yeah, we're just gonna buy that tile. We're gonna get the copper. And we'll send this worker on his on his merry way. So yeah, um, just like I mean, to a lesser extent, in this game than in the than in the real world at this point, Japan was kind of like catching up a little bit. Um, make, we finished a harbor. Okay, let's make a workshop. Um, and if you see, if you look at the scoreboard here, we've actually we've we've caught up significantly in terms of points at least not that not that points mean terribly much but we are now top the top half of people we got all those wonders i'm really kind of grasping at loose ends here but we can say that we experienced our own kind of meiji revolu uh meiji restoration and in osaka i guess we should maybe we should build some constabularies Possibly. Not that too many people are going to be spying on us. Uh, we could go for Christo Redentor. Or Christo, as I'm... I guess it's probably pronounced. Oh, we're still on production focus. That's probably not necessary and not good at all. Um, I love how we already have infantry. How do we already have infantry? How are we... Th oh, because we went... Wait. Oh, because we went all the way to plastics. That's just so ridiculous. Uh, yeah, infantry is good. That might be more than China has. Yeah, they still have great war infantry. Wow, that's actually pretty funny. Are they still at war with uh, Persia? Global politics. Does not appear to... Greece is having some diplomatic trouble, to put it lightly. Attila's at war with Sweden. It must have passed China. But it, I, China's not at war with Darius anymore. Attila, no. We are friendly with all these people. We're friendly with, like, almost everyone. Oh, Greece is also the... Look at Greece. That's... Greece needs to be taken out of this game. They're, like, they're literally... Like... Oh, I thought they were the worst. They're... They are... Oh, they are the worst. 
I'm so confused. This thing keeps scrolling up and down. They are the worst in the game. Stop talking to me. Um, yet they have 20 delegates. Someone just needs to take them out of the game. That actually has to happen. Um, who can I get to... Can I get the Ottomans to go to war with them, maybe? That really is pretty annoying. I wonder how much money they're making. Greece, that is. Because they're, they're the only threat to our diplomatic... Um, uh, success at this point. So, Ottomans, Ottomans. We could just go, we could like, shall we declare, we could do this, shall we declare war against Alexander? Alright, he'll, we'll do it in ten turns. Wait, we don't have to do anything? Greece is never going to be able to do anything against us? Research agreement is complete. Great. City connection. This guy, I'm going to give him, I guess, boarding party. For now, I'm gonna send. Um, I'm gonna send another ironclad onto Satsuma. We got. We've uh, discovered archaeology. Do we have any archaeological sites in our land? Possibility that someone is. Oh yeah, we do have one right there. Okay. Because it's highly likely that someone or other has already stolen all of them. But I'm sure there are actually probably a lot up north, or maybe not. I don't know. There are probably a lot in uh, America. No? Maybe not? Maybe everyone's already just gotten to everything? I have no idea. Oh yeah, I, I don't know. We'll see. Um, Tokyo. I'm gonna make a zoo because we are gonna continue, need to continue counteracting the forces of whatever it is that people want, order. Who has, who's with the tourism here? Persia has 98 with order. Not surprising. So, we're going to have to try to um, somehow or another avoid Persia going too crazy. I mean, 98's not that bad for this point in the game. Are they increasing with everyone? I assume so. They are. Yeah, right now that's not huge of threat. Of course, in the 20th century, with the Atomic era and uh, information era technologies that begins increasing very quickly, but open borders. Fine. Just it's I guess advantageous to just be as close with everyone as we possibly can. Um, yeah, that's fine. Okay. China's at sixty tech. We're at fifty three. Doris is at 61. These people. The Incans. Otherwise, people aren't terribly far ahead of us. It's just these two people. Persia and uh, China. It's absurd. Um, okay, with this guy now. I've, like, improved all of our territory. I guess we could... Oh, wait, I don't have any workers over in Nagoya. How long would it take this guy to get over here? Nine turns. That might be... I think I... Yeah, I am... Oh, bleh. Am I going to do this? Yeah. We're going to send this guy over here. Gonna put Nagoya's. Gonna just gonna not do anything. That's fine. Um, because yeah, sending this guy over to Nagoya will be faster than building a worker there, and we don't really need that many workers over uh, on Japan proper right now. Worst comes to worst, we can always buy one, but that's a pretty good amount of money that I don't want to be spending right now. Make a research lab. Try to catch up best as possible. This video is getting pretty close to wrapping up. Let's just play through 1910. It would be nice to get to like the beginning of World War II or World War. I keep saying World War II, World War One. I. I guess we could do that. So these turns are going pretty quickly. And oh, actually, you know, let's just uh, let's play till the till the end of the Meiji, which is in four years. That that's a good stopping point. Uh, fine. Honestly, open borders, like, the only reason I wouldn't be making open borders at this point is because I'm afraid of cultural influence, but since Persia is the only threat, or Persia is the only pe person I care about in terms of cultural stuff, um, I'm not terribly worried about any of these other things. 
I would be liking to. I would. I would be liking. I would like to be making a little more money. Um, are these guys still in manual specialist control? Not sure. What do we get? I don't know what we got. Alas. Grease. God damn it. That is incredibly frustrating. Go this way. Kill these guys. No, kill the... I thought he was just going to try to go through the axe man. Not that it particularly matters. Is Osaka still on manual specialist control? No. Is Tokyo... Tokyo is. It's going to be tragic if we take them off manual specialist control? No. So... Although that probably would get us great. So, oh, we're just gonna we're about to get one anyway. So yeah, we're, that's fine. Gustavus Adolphus, no. If that was Greece. It would be a whole different matter. I don't know why you're going to war with Sweden. Do you guys like have territorial disputes or something? If you do, I wouldn't. I had, can't imagine where it would be. So maybe like here. Also, how has Shaka not gotten that? Maybe he has, and it's just. But what is this? Hidden and oh, it's a hidden antiquity site. Did we do exploration? We did do exploration. I forgot about that. So we can see all those things. But there are still like not any up in. I mean, it makes sense that there aren't any in Siberia. But I feel like that wouldn't like the game wouldn't know that or shouldn't know that. But maybe they do. Maybe whoever made the true true Earth map. Tried to make antiquity sites in realistic places. Uh, we do have a new fishing boat location in Satsuma, so let's add a work boat to the to the queue. Nara can make a let's see all these buildings. Observatory actually could be good. Um. Let's make an observatory. Let's do it. Uh, yes. Observatory and Osaka. Police station. Osaka is the most advanced uh, police, has the most advanced police force in the, in the empire. Also, I'm just, I like, I'm just so happy that we've uh, moved over to America. This is always my dream. No matter what strategy game I'm playing, if it's on an Earth map and I like am playing as someone in East Asia, I want to colonize California. Solomon has declared war on Isabella. Man, you were gonna go to war with Greece. Why are you also going to war with Isabella? And why is Isab why Isabella? You guys aren't even near it. This is just so weird. Who knows? I'm not sure if I've ever seen the Spanish city of Vitoria before. So it must mean that Spain has a lot of cities. I guess maybe I've just never expanded that much as Spain. They do have Sparta here, right in uh, Calais. I think that's what that is. Maybe Calais up here. No. Maybe Calais over here. I don't know. Barcelona is actually pretty close to where Paris is. It's kind of funny. Okay, Tokyo. I cannot believe I have made. I haven't made a lighthouse here. That's tragic. Absolutely bloody tragic. Approaching World War One, a very interesting, a incredibly interesting historical event that doesn't have a compared to other particip uh, main participators does not have a particularly huge effect on Japan. But um, at the end of it, I mean, by by the end, it has had a it has a it has had a bit of an effect on Japan. But we'll talk about that when the uh, when the time comes. As we do see China. Oh, China. Ugh. My one antiquity site. The one that I was going to get. You had to steal it from me. Chinese bastards. This is why we declared war on you in real life. You just think you own the damn world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. We got our great scientist, we finished biology, um, the Meiji era has just ended, long live the emperor, and this marks the beginning of the, uh, the Taisho period. Taisho, again, was a name adopted by 
the uh, the new emperor that means a pro probably a pro I don't remember exactly what it means, but it means probably approximately the same thing as Meiji, which is enlightened ruler. Probably means like enlightened age or something. Who knows? Um, rulers generally are very good at coming up with BS names for their for their rules. Okay, thank you guys very much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye bye.